so the lighting on the cover of the uh, of Giuliani, the time cover of Giuliani, was really complicated. And uh, we scouted out that shoot for like a week ahead of time, going every day at dusk to figure out exactly the right time, exactly where he should be, exactly what we'd need, where the lights would go. What was tricky about it was I wanted it to not look like there's any lighting and to have it look like he's actually lit by the ambient light from the, basically from the buildings below. Because there's no reason if you're standing 65 stories up, you're going to get lit by a softbox higher than you are. OK, so I'm just going to sketch this out. Basically, we're at the top of uh, Rockefeller Center, which is like sort of 65 stories up. I'll eliminate the bottom 63 stories. And basically what we had going is we had a, a terrace, a, I'm guessing about two stories down, two or three stories down, a little terrace there. And then it came up another couple of floors to where he was. He's standing actually on the parapet there of the roof. And then there was a little platform that we made that we were standing on. And that way, when he was physically standing up here on the parapet, it wouldn't be so freaky. We made this little platform that's basically just six inches a foot down below the frame. So from where he's standing, he sees a big platform he can just step onto. So basically, Giuliani himself is kind of standing uh, my great drafting skills here. Those are his shoes. He's standing here. He's got his hands in his pockets. There's his head, right? He's standing there. I'm basically here. Uh, actually with an 8x10 camera, as it turns out, for this thing. That would be the bellows. And I'm, uh, I'm standing, I think up there, actually I'm standing on a little ladder here, so that would be me over here taking this picture. And the lighting was kind of interesting. For this thing, we actually used uh, the Profoto narrow beam reflectors, right? And what's cool about those is uh, the grid spots concentrate the light. They kind of cut, cut off light and really cut down the beam. The narrow beam reflectors are like a, in a sense like a, uh, you know, like a satellite dish for, for TV and that they really focus the light, right? So they actually add to the light instead of cutting it down. So we were able to put our, uh, our narrow beam reflectors way down here. This is again like two stories down or so, right? And they're up here aiming up at him, these guys, and they're putting out enough light and they're actually rim lighting him on the sides and they have green gels on to actually um, in a sense, tie them into the background, which is all fluorescent lit offices and stuff in the building. So it kind of ties that in. It gives a reason for that light to exist, right? So that's actually coming up and lighting him from below way down as rim lights. There was actually a uh, pro photo. I think it was the uh, medium strip, like a four foot strip light. And that was actually on the ground right here in front of him, really low, right? I believe it was actually resting on this platform, as I recall. And that's just uplighting him right from underneath with the same green gel, right? It's not monster lighting because it's kind of soft and it's like a glow and it feels again like it's the same lights that are back there coming up on him from below. And then there was a, uh, an octa up here and to the side. Uh, I'm guessing it was pretty big. And that's lighting him here. And, but that's way down. That's really just a fill and it's a little bit warm. It's lit, it's uh, gelled a little bit orange. And that way it's just kind of like a fill that would be there kind of from little incandescent lights that might be around on a roof, right? And so that guy's sitting back here. This is the C-stand. They were all triggered with um, radio slaves, radio remotes. And the tricky part was we didn't know if he'd ever actually even stand up there. So he had a security guys and stuff. That's why we made the platform. And it was like a 12 by 12 foot wooden platform. And there wasn't even a moment's hesitation. He sort of walked right in and said, oh, that looks great, and kind of just stormed right up there and stood there. And um, he didn't want to really be shot at ground zero. That was a big challenge, because he felt like that was sacred ground, and it would be too self-aggrandizing. But I guess I, he didn't think it would be too self-aggrandizing to be standing on top of the world. <laughs> that was OK. So that's what you see. And basically, back here, you see like the Empire State Building behind him. Right? That's, that's back here. A lot of the buildings downtown are all behind him. So you kind of see a real neat cityscape sort of spread out behind him. I think that, the, in a sense, the funny behind the scenes moment that we had with this thing was that moment of truth. Like, would he or would he not go up there? And you see a security guy standing there, and they're all given the look like, uh uh, this isn't happening. And then he went up there. And of course, then it started to rain. That's always the fun part, right? And I think the, the moment of truth for me was technical. Like, are these all going to fire? Like, what are we going to do? Do you know what I mean? 
So I think the moment, the moment of truth was, after all this preparation, was our picture just going to be that, <laughs> with nobody there and just a nice skyline. The feeling was that he was, in a sense, he was like a, like a skyscraper, sort of. The whole idea is he's standing there as this like pillar of strength in a way. Because on the day of 9-11, he was the face everybody saw. The president wasn't visible. Giuliani made his appearance, and that was his shining moment, really. And certainly by shooting it at dusk, it is, it has a strong mood to it. it. It does feel a little ominous. It does feel a little heavy. At the same time, it's kind of like the sparkling romance of New York, the fantasy of Gotham. Do you know what I mean? So that kind of comes across too.